Hey guys, this is Chesney Hawks here. You are watching My Hammers 11 with the one and only Russ. Hi everybody, Russ from My Hammers 11. Hope you're all safe and well. If you're channel, please see subscribe and hit the bell icon. It's made every time we put new content on. As always, we'd like to thank our lovely channel sponsors, Untuck It. Check them out in the description below. Today's guest, well, it's it's the afternoon, it's, it's the morning. It? I mean, we've, I mean, Ches is from the LA as well. Ches is in the LA is as well. So. Yeah, he's in LA. Oh, I'll have to, uh, we'll have to start a supporters club. I know there's a supporters club out here. I've Hollywood never Hammers, yeah. Watched. We've had, yeah. we've had, um, uh, Longers, James Longman is on there as well. So the, he's the exec producer of the Late Late Show. So, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Hi, Sam. How are you? <laughs> I'm not bad. I'm not bad. We had an earthquake here actually at four o'clock in the morning this morning. Oh, shit. I've been up since four o'clock. So it's, oh, uh, no early rise today <laughs> oh god oh dear oh dear that's the type of thing i would that would happen to me you know because obviously it's easter bank holiday at the moment this will go out on the tuesday anyway but an easter bank holiday so typically you know all week you know get up for work normal time and you're thinking <laughs> oh okay brilliant i'm gonna have a lion no 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 yeah Daughter, exactly. wife ping at six o'clock in the morning oh, for god's sake <laughs> for god's sake <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't need it this morning. No, 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 no. But I mean, we've had it all here. We've had it was we've had a lovely Easter, and then it, and it snowed this afternoon. I just saw that because it's been hot there, and then it was it snowed as well, didn't it? Yeah, it snowed. Uh, walking to Sainsbury's and it snowed. I was like, oh, I tell you what, this this country, man, this country. <laughs> no wonder, no wonder you fucked off to back to LA. So yeah, exactly, exactly. One exactly. of the reasons. Yeah, I can imagine, man. But we don't get many earthquakes here, so you know yeah <laughs> swings and roundabouts a bit swings and roundabouts anyway how have you been my friend how have you been i'm good um back in la we've done the road show this year um <laughs> pretty much lived in every country possible um and we've got back to where we started so it's, <laughs> <laughs> um but it's good it feels i've got to say it feels like life's getting back to normal again yeah. so i know you're a little bit behind us here but it's here everything's back open again um people nearly a lot of people over a quarter of the population is vaccinated so it's it's starting to we're starting to it feels like normal life again other than a mask yeah. it feels like normal life there's not much yeah, you can't yeah. do anymore so nah. it, it's a bit more of a positive mood mm. no i think it's the same here though to be honest i think it's the same here i mean we've got i don't know how many of it's a fair percentage have had their first vaccination already here so yeah i mean you know next week the pub's open that's what I mean. So it's, it's better. You want to see people getting back to work and, and things yeah. like that. So I'm desperate just to get back into an office now. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think I am as well, actually, now. I just think, like, people. yeah, I was thinking about the other day. It's like uh, the last time I got on the train, because my <laughs> office shut down. I was in Farringdon. That shut down pretty sharpish. The last time I got on a train was West Ham versus Southampton. Then the previous, no, so it wasn't, it was Man United when we played the Man United game this season when we had 2,500 yeah. fans in. Then the last time before then was the Southampton game, whenever that was, like, ages ago. I haven't been on the train since, like, over a year. It's re re crazy, absolutely crazy. But, yeah, hopefully, it seems that things are starting to starting to get in the, the right way. Um, so we'll see, yeah. At the time of asking, I think Boris is just about to go on and, and tell us about our new system or traffic oh, system. well hopefully it's good <laughs> <laughs> who knows who knows? Yeah. who knows who knows but it's all good yeah and hopefully we'll start getting some fans back in the stadium for the last game of the season which would be cool um the yeah. southampton game i think ten thousand. so i mean that's one thing that's kept us going isn't it sam to be honest i mean west ham you know it's just yeah it's mental isn't it like it's weird it's and i know you're the same but it, it's our life yeah it, it, it's for me it's everything revolves yeah. around like my yeah. I'm so used to now. It was funny. I went back to live in Europe for six months, um, and I found it so weird having games at three, yeah, eight yeah. o'clock. It's it takes your whole day up because I'd I'd yeah. watch every single game. Whereas in LA, the games start at five o'clock in the morning, so I'll get up and they're finished by one. So you've still got your day. So yeah, yeah. I was getting the old woman saying. Oh, you're always watching bloody football, but she's never noticed it before because she was asleep for a bit of it. So yeah, it's uh, <laughs> so I'm back up to my time. But it's uh, being back now. I realise the Champions League and the midweeks are difficult because yeah. it's sort of midday mm. and you they're on almost. Not West Ham. I'm, I'll be watching that today. So that's yeah, the big one today. 
Big one today. Big one today without Mr. Rice. Oh, no. I just I, I saw it about an hour ago and I'm, <laughs> I nearly crashed the car when I was reading it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, oh, just when it was about to go. This is because I think as a West Ham fan, you think this is it. This is where it all goes wrong. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's like the, it's the bump in the road we've all been waiting for. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's all it's the it's the it's the three nil loss to Burnley at home or something like you know. There's always one, and it's just this instead. I mean, we had like a little. There was like for about I don't know about a day, we were a bit worried about the suit. Remember, the suit got sent off against Fulham, yeah. and we said, "Oh, that's it. It's ruined. Season's over." And then it yeah. got rescinded. So it's like, oh, phew. And then it's like this one's like fucking. Oh, I was kind of like, worse. The day it's going to be like it's a big of smoke and mirrors, and then he comes out with a captain's <laughs> armband. You're like, yeah, yeah. come on, Moyes. That's what I think. That's <laughs> what I think. Obviously, this is going out on Tuesday, so he could be all proved wrong. Yeah. You know, yeah. it could be a real sort of Beatles about moment. You know, Andrew yeah. have done like a prank on us all. You know, uh, April Fools is extended until uh, the fifth of April, but no, yeah, exactly. I don't think it will, unfortunately. But yeah, but, I mean, it's, it's 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 times like these where. West Ham comes out of its own, you know what I mean? It's like it's a face of adversity, and God, we've had enough this season already in terms of you know, lo- you know conceding goals early and stuff like that. So yeah. that we'll see, and whatever happens, wherever we finish is going to be a great, had a great season anyway. So I think um, so. It's been, yeah. I think I suppose it's been one of the most enjoyable seasons that I can remember. Mm. Yeah, me too. The Billich, obviously, first season, uh, but mm. before that, I would say it's back to Harry's era. That's what I was saying. Yeah, that's what I was. I mean, even the Billick season. Cardew's first year in the Premiership. That was Maybe. a really good year. Yeah, because uh, you got to see got final. final. Yeah, that was a blinding year because we could have actually finished higher that year, but we've started resting the players at the end, didn't we? Yeah, and it was. Uh, but that that was probably. I was that was oh six, wasn't it? I think that was probably my favourite year of watching football. Yeah, I went to see everything that year. Yeah, I think you're right, man. I think I think. We did a little thing the other days. Like I think that I think that bowling season was 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 an amazing season because of it was the last season of the bowling. I think if we yeah. took that out of our, took that out of isolation, um, I don't think it was. I don't think it would have been as a, as a, as a phenomenal season as as we had. We, it's just that everything was like, oh, it's the last time we play Arsenal at the bowling. It's the last time we play Southampton. You know what I mean? Um, this season's different. I think this season is. As I, I'm similar to you. I think it's probably. Reminiscent of the season where we finished fifth with with Harry when it was you know Ian Wright and yeah and and, and Razor and, and people yeah. like that and so yeah it's 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 enjoyable and it? it's enjoy but it's, I was talking to some guy today a, a Wolves fan and and um, he was asking me you know what was so different about this season to last season I mean you know you know in terms of personnel wise relatively similar by the right back really how we finished the season last season I just it's think it's a collective. Yeah. Like, I, I'm a, I've been a big voice for a couple of years on Fredericks and Cresswell. Yeah. Um, and I just, if you'd have asked me last year, I, I honestly thought they were the two worst fullbacks in the league. We can see goals from there nearly every game. Yeah. I have to give them their due. Cresswell is, has been mm-hmm. phenomenal. Um, and I actually think Fredericks has been very unlucky not to play yeah. more because I think when he's played, he's done very well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Burnley, I think it was, when he played in that higher position. He, he I yeah. thought he was brilliant. Um, so you've got to really give the coaching staff they mm-hmm. what they've done to them because they've transformed these two players. Cresswell was a fantastic player for us. Yeah. But I just felt that he was getting beat too easy. We, we can see the goals from there all the time. But when you look at them this year, it's they look Cresswell looks like he, he, he should be in the England setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. It's crazy. It is. It's, it's mental. I, I call it. Um, I call it moisification. It's a verb to moisify, and that's what he does with players. It seems he moisifies them into these. Like you look at him, and you look at someone like someone like uh, Fournals. So obviously, Fournals was bought by Pellegrini as like a tricky number ten. And yeah, sort of transformed him into this sort of integral midfielder. Which I think you know, the, when we lost uh, Man United game and the Arsenal game, well, we practically lost. We got a point, but he felt like a defeat, didn't it? Um, mm-hmm. He wasn't playing. I think he makes a massive difference. And he's done the same. He seems to be doing the same with Frederick. As he said, pushing me into more advanced role. Masuaku yeah. as well, you know. That's that, another one. Well, look, how did it, well, did he start the season? Yeah. The guy I, I thought was awful, um, yeah. I would say. But he's become, I like, can't wait for him to be back. No, like, exactly. Five at the back. I thought we, I still think it was probably our best formation. But yeah. And I, I was so worried when we went to the four. But then it looks like we've got two great formations now. So it's, yeah. It's uh, we look like a team with a plan finally. Yes, no, Not I agree. It's players just thrown on a pitch. No, I agree. There seems to be like something being built, 
you know um yeah. it's where that billet season was a great season in isolation i wouldn't say there was a real plan it was no. like apart from just give it to Pyatt. Yeah, that was the plan yeah, yeah exactly well it seems like you know things have been built and you know and and Moyes is talking about obviously in january we didn't buy a striker but he was like oh but i want to get and he's like he's planning three or four and obviously next season it'll be okay well then we need, like, we need to replace fabianski next summer and, and mark next summer you know so there's yeah. there's like this like building blocks and it's it seems to be the right way and if we finish so we finish say sixth this season fifth or sixth and say next season we finish seventh you know that's that to me is is a is a great couple of seasons and you know that's that's what we need to do we need to be in that top eight you know top eight we should be um based on that team you know and um hopefully you know this i think in a weird way i always look in the positives for everything and i think declan rice getting injured is actually a bit of i'm not saying best no why am i saying it but yeah. it's a bit of a blessing in disguise because we've 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 never had a plan b you know Dex we played, rely on him so much we, yeah we rely on him and and there's and there's i think he's played something ridiculous like 50 something consecutive premier League, a whole season and a half even more i think it's like yeah i think it's almost yeah I something like that. Um, yeah. 90 minutes straight or so i don't know if that includes england and things like that but it was we rely far too heavily on this kid yeah um, but he is he's, I would say he's, he's up there with the most special players i've ever seen yeah he's mustard he's absolutely brilliant and and i and i think actually it's going to help us out a bit it gives us a plan b um and also it convinces people you know higher up the food chain so to speak that you know we need this guy we need him timed down to a, a long-term contract and da, 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 and all this as well because he's so I integral i can't see why we've not made him the highest paid player in the club's history. Yeah. Really. That's yeah. what that's the bit I don't get. So you know I, what? I, you're I, the captain, you're the we're gonna give you the money that you deserve, because I think yeah. he does deserve it. Because he's been there what, four seasons now, five seasons? Yeah. yeah. Like first name on the team sheet. I, I I don't know if him probably gets frustrated and he looks at people like Yarmolenko and things like that on more money. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, and you could go to a bigger club and get that money. Yeah. Uh, why i'm putting this out there by the way no, <laughs> no but i think also but i don't think he's he's necessarily influenced by money unlike a yarmolenko do you know no, what i mean i, I know uh, but i think it's all going to come down to there's going to be money in it yeah, yeah there will be because it's a there short career it is yeah got 10 years to make as much as he can people yeah. going mad about harry kane now what would harry kane earn if he'd gone to real madrid for the last five years um, that's a classic example isn't it so like, so like compared to him and gareth bale for example you know how much more money is gareth as gareth bale than harry kane and how many games has he played you know compared to harry kane but exactly. yeah. Yeah, yeah interesting we'll see it's gonna be a good interesting summer i think it's gonna be interesting summer across everyone you know crystal palace they've, they've got like 15 first teamers who are out yeah. of contract plus their manager i mean i don't think actually Moyes has signed a new contract yet technically i know no, he's got a roll got on at the end of the summer down. i think so he- I think we've. Uh, it's nice. Do you know what with Moyes? When he when he got there, he looked like he had the weight of the world on him. He's, yeah, he was ashen. Every time you saw him, he was grey. All of a sudden, he's got a bit of colour back in his. Yeah, chin. he's smiling he, a lot more, isn't he? See that, but I think what he was clever with as well, and probably what Frank didn't do at Chelsea, is he's got experienced coaches next to him. Yeah. Um, and he's brought in the the Nolan factor of a bit the old West Ham, but Stuart Pearce, he's been a manager, he's been in England, he's been yeah. he's been there. Um, Irvine, obviously, but he's brought the right people. And I think that's probably what Frank let himself down on. He probably needed a a Steve Clark next to him. Yeah, yeah. Um, even, even that weren't good enough. But I think you need that bit of experience there as well. Yeah, no, I agree. I think with Frank as well. I think Frank was always Frank was always on the high to nothing. You know, my my yeah. view of, of that was, you know, no one. There's no one in the world who's a respected manager who would take on that Chelsea job of not spending any money. You got to play with the kids. Oh, Frank will do it. He's like a legend. If it goes all to shit, it's like, well, you can okay because he had a bad. You know, as soon as, as soon as money was available, um, yeah, you know, he wasn't the right man for the job. But uh, that was that was a terrible shame. Couldn't happen to a nicer person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right so sam first question he says we've got a, a 15 minutes over in why west ham sam you know you talk so passionately about it i know you obviously you know you get up at three o'clock in the morning to watch games and but why why west ham so the day i was born uh my uncle uh bought me a west ham teddy 
uh, and it's still actually on my boy's bed now. Um, but that was it from day one. Um, yeah. My dad wasn't actually big into football, really. Um, and I'm, I'm going to put it out there right now. He probably went and watched Tottenham more than anyone. Um, <laughs> his mates were Tottenham fans. He wasn't really massive into football. And then as I got more into football, I probably got... Do you know what? I think I heard this the other day. I think our first game ever was the same game. Was it? Was yours uh, Oxford? Yeah, Oxford United, 92, 93, 53. That was my first first game as well. Perfect. The, uh, so that was my first time. So I got into it around that time. 92 would probably be where I started. My first kit was the white BAC Windows kit. Nice. So that, yeah, was, yeah. that was that era. And then I, I suppose I didn't really understand it as much, but that was the first game. And after that first game, I was just hooked. Um, yeah. And then I had a season ticket from that day. Um Go away a lot, um, and then I had a season ticket up until I was, oh, until I moved away to so 2011. Um, always sat in the West Stand, um, so yeah, it was. I suppose I not classed as a real supporter really because I was in. I was one of them. He's in, yeah, he's, he's in the, the seats. Yeah. I like. I like the. Uh, I like the comfort of football. <laughs> um, yeah, nice. Uh, but yeah, that was that was me really, and it's. I'm just obsessed by it. Um, yeah, it's weird, and and. Petra, she has no idea why. She just can't understand it. Um, but it's like everything about my life revolves around West Ham. Like yeah. I won't, will not do something on that day if West Ham's playing. Um, so we have to look. Oh, what day are we going out the weekend? Oh, Saturday. No, I can't do Saturday. We'll have to do Sunday. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's um, yeah, it's weird because it doesn't feel like I haven't been going for ten years. I'm now the. Yeah. Yeah, fan, which I never thought I'd ever be, but it's obviously because I live in different countries. Um, it has to be. But as soon as I get back, my my trips are always planned about who West Ham's plan. Are they at home yeah. enough that I can go? Yeah. Where can we go and do that? And we had the talk the other day of obviously if West Ham made Champions League or Europe, oh, I'd I'd be at every single one. There's yeah. not a never miss it yeah yeah no i get that i get that totally no, i'm the same i'm the same with well, technically because yeah i mean i would it is oh yeah yeah i would have to yeah, well, I basically it's everything i have to organize around football around west ham so it's literally you know like my, my wife's birthday's on the saturday we're playing on the sunday the last game of the season so it's like she's like i put up this really nice restaurant what day the saturday oh thank god for that no, i remember like, when i was i must have been 16 in the Toto cup um I got a train back on my own. I must have been 16. I was in Cornwall. I got a train back on my own to go to the preliminary game of the Intertoto Cup. Nice. Uh, I remember going there. There was hardly anyone there. I fell asleep on the seats, got back, went back on the train to Cornwall. But I went to every game home and away in Toto Cup because it was just like, when I just think, like, how mad are you to do that sort of stuff? Yeah, it was yeah. terrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. And, like, obviously the Youth Cup games and things like that we used to go to. Um, it was brilliant. It's it's like a big family, West Ham. It is. It is. And I think even more so, you probably feel even more like a family being thousands of thousands of miles away as well, isn't it? You know, it, it's it, it, you probably cling to it a lot more. I mean, obviously, we interview fans all over the world, not necessarily guys from round here who have moved. Yeah. A lot of people who have, you know, we interview, God, I don't know. Those like are yeah, like back yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, like Bangalore or or Hong Kong or Thailand or you know guys in I know, Chicago who just picked West Ham because they hadn't won fuck all like the ball like the Cubs hadn't won fuck all yeah. when when they were to get when they were they were supporting you know, all those type of things and it is a real family community and you know? you've obviously you've got that that sort of uh, that sort of you know, blood connection obviously having sort of you know been there from the early 90s onwards but you still take it with you and with your boys and stuff like that and so yeah it's is it's great i love it <laughs> i do love it but yeah i know i know what you mean you have to sort of you look at i look at my <laughs> so i've got a meeting comes into my calendar at like five o'clock and I'm yeah like, i can't do that because i've got to be at the ground for four for an eight o'clock kickoff it's not going to work but yeah it's um yeah it must be it's a sickness and i think that's probably yeah. coming from, i don't think people who follow top sides or ever understand it. And, I, and I'm saying yeah. people like us, even Tottenham fans to an extent, Everton fans, people, they've won stuff in the past, but in our mm. life, they've never, never won nothing. Um, you must love it to watch them win nothing. 
we've seen West Ham go up and down, Newcastle fans, that sort of thing. And you cling to that old shit player that you bought. And yeah. <laughs> you all remember it. And like someone like Samassi Abu is a hero. Like, it's yeah. A, like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the other clubs, they, like, if you're a Man United fan, you don't get that. The shit player that you bought, you remember for being like Bebe. You remember what yeah. a waste of money that was. It wasn't like we clung to this geezer who was absolutely useless and made him our hero. <laughs> it's true it's like it's true it's like someone like jemba jemba no one remembers really from Man united no. so you know as you said pete butler i mean he's not a shit he was my idol the first yeah. player i met was pete butler um but i know what you mean, I know yeah. you mean. we have these but they're cult heroes aren't they because they're not so cult. shit but it's like they're cult heroes and so <laughs> cool. people like jimmy walker cult yeah. hero came to us like yeah. they, they he wasn't the top top goalkeeper but he was our top goalkeeper he yeah. saved one penalty against Lampard. Yeah, it was it. Adrian, <laughs> think all these people, they've done one thing or but then gone on to do more things for the club. But they yeah. never it's so true, man. It's so true. I love it. No, I love it. It's it's and we've had loads of them. We're very fortunate to have a lot of them on. Um right. Talking of hopefully well, might, might, you might have some shit players in your eleven. You might do. Who knows? I don't care. Um no, I've gone, I've gone, uh... so we so we, we as I said everyone we've had on the channel, bar Harry Redknapp. Nigeria Coker and uh and Ian Bishop. Ian Bishop. Everyone else has picked an eleven. And so the idea being is you pick the you can pick whatever criteria you want, but the only rule is you have to be alive to a seed and play. So you've you've got almost well, you do have an identical, I think I'm maybe one year older than you, an identical um group of players to pick from. So it'd be interesting. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Right. So who's between the sticks for the Sam eleven? This was a tough one, I thought, because there's been so many. Obviously, Ludo's cult hero. Then you got, I thought Shaka was brilliant for us. Um, and Robert Green obviously was brilliant. He, he went to England. Even yeah. Roy Carroll um, yeah. was very good. But I've actually gone with Fabianski. Um, yeah. And I actually think he is one of the best signings that we have ever made. Yeah. For the money we paid, I think he's phenomenal. Um, yeah. So I think he's, he's my number one, without yeah. a doubt. No, I agree. I agree. It, my, my only gripe with Fabianski is we, we didn't get him. It would have been great no. to have got him before he went, you know, when he went to Swansea. If we had him then, he would have been, in my opinion, in the same realm as Ludo because he would have played, a, you know, a good seven or eight years probably for the club. I um, agree with you on that. Um, and, yeah. It, and it was a tough one putting him in over someone like Ludo or, or yeah. Shaka, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. And all them, to be fair, there were some good goalkeepers in there. We've had some, we've had some good ones and all, but the uh, yeah. Bernard Lama, that was a good one. The, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And Roberto, we've had, we've had a few. We had, yeah, yeah, we had a sort of a spate, didn't we? We had like Ludo for ages, and then like, and then it was like a bit of a oh shit, um, um, and it, 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 had a howler yeah. again. Bradford, didn't he? Neil Finn. Exactly. Neil That's Finn. Nice. Hopefully yeah. Neil's coming on. With his one oh, year. Really? Yeah, I'll get Neil on. We've had, with goalkeepers is, is an area we seem to have done really well with. We've had, uh, as I said, we had, we've had we've had Jimmy on. We've had Steve on. We've had Shaka on. We've had uh, Joe Seeley on. We've had... Oh, oh, I, can't Joe, remember. I love Joe. I love Joe. Joe's a top boy. Um, who the else? Chad was a lovely fella. Oh, yeah. Top mans. Top mans they were. Yeah, but we've done well. We've Yeah, we've had about probably about half a dozen. Uh, David James, fuck. We had David James on recently. So, That's another yes. good golf people we oh, had. Oh, yes, I mean, we just we've done really well. He's for us a lot of times. It's funny when you go back over these things, you think, oh, we've actually had some good... Y Yusi yeah. was a good goalkeeper. Yusi was a great keeper for us, wasn't he? And Darren Randolph as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Adrian, to be said, I mean, Adrian is a typical West Ham goalkeeper, you know, yeah. just like, just brilliant in one game and an absolute dog another game, you know, and then that's, that's, just, that's just West Ham. But yeah, Fabianski, I agree. He's, he was in my team. I just think he is the best goalkeeper technically I think I've ever seen. Um, he's just so, it's it's like now, it's obviously I'm still at the game. So, you know, when the ball comes across and it's like a, a something to, a, a cross to claim, I don't even look at Fabianski catching it because I know he's going to catch it. Yeah. I'm looking at who he's going to throw it to already, you know, just have that sense of confidence. And obviously when he wasn't in the team last season, Seems it mentally, it was last season ago. Um, you know, the team went to shit. Pellegrini lost his job and Roberto, and yeah. you know, it's so important, right? But um, at least we've gone for another season, which is good. Um, totally right. Okay, so Fab's in goal. Let's go, uh, defense. Who's your first? Yeah, you go for it as you want to, Sam. There's only one number three, number three, my hero, yeah. uh, 
that it doesn't get any better. Um, yeah. I think from that first game that we ever saw him play, um, yeah. he scored two that day, I think. He did, yeah, because I said, I said, oh, you scored my first ever goal I saw. I and mean, I scored two that day, Russ. I mean, yeah, I, I'm yeah, sure. I, I, know, I know he did, but it was the first one because it was yeah. like it was you. Point, wasn't it? Yeah, 35. I you know, still Bambi. remember that goal. Um, and I remember the one against Man City and he... He never got the uh, acclaim that he, he did as a footballer. No. He was a fantastic footballer. Um, yeah. His passing was insane, actually. Um, and obviously the tackling. Everyone remembers him for the tackling, think more thuggish or whatever, but mm. he was a fantastic player. Touch. And for someone that didn't warm up or train that yeah. hard, he, he could have been even better. Mental, isn't it? Yeah, I asked him that question. I said, "Is it true you didn't? Is that you never used to warm up?" But nah, no. Nope, I'd uh, I'd I put, my, put my kit on. I put my kit on. Sit in the hot bath with my kit on uh, with a Mars bar and a can of Coke. Madness. Madness. When you think now, like madness, it's funny. I'm just listening to Arsene Wenger's book at the moment, and it like you, you that, and you listen yeah. to that and that. Like, <laughs> you were the same era. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I loved him. Yeah, yeah top Julian, boy. for me, there should be a statue of him outside the ground for me because I think, yeah. he, for me, he's up there with the greatest ever West Ham player. Yeah, no, I agree. He's Particularly there. He's from... Bobby Moore. Obviously, Bobby Moore is there, but then you've got the, the Billy Bonds, the Trevor Brookings. He is there for me. Mm. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. I think particularly for our generation, because we never saw any of them play. So no. you know, it's like it's almost like a tier system, isn't it? They're like, you know, there's like, you know, that for that era, every era has them. And obviously for our era, it is people like Julian Dix and people like that and, and Ludo and, and guys like that. You know, that sort of era epitomized those players. And yeah. Julian's, yeah, as you said, he was. But he's one of those guys who transcends generations. So the older players, younger players, young, younger fans, older fans, um, and stuff like that. But for Julian, okay, Julian's in. Made much of, you know, when he was when he was the number two. I didn't ever feel that he. We used that. No, as much. Really. No. Um, there should have been a lot more fanfare around that, really, because it was great to have him. There. Yeah, but he didn't like any of that. No, but it, no. It, it's a shame. Like, look, it was a shame. Brought a new era of fans to Julian Dix. Mm. It was a shame because obviously the last game of the season when we did the big thing at the end with Ben and 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 uh, and Bianca, we had um he was meant to be doing some. We was trying to get him to do a bit like um because we introduced like I think we introduced all the like the former ham of the years yeah. or something like in ta and and um he didn't want any of it, so we had a spare taxi. No, and Billy Bond didn't turn up, so we had two mean, spare taxis. It was a shame, a but he's never been like that. He's never been that type of person, you know. So no. Um, it's just it's just funny, isn't it? You think if I if that was me, right? But that's just me. Maybe it's just my personality. I'll be all over it. I'll be all over it. You know, like doing everything. You know, but it's like, yeah. but yeah, but it doesn't matter. Maybe that's part of the, part of his charm because he's not because he's like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not if, if, in everyone's faces all the time. But nah, fair fair play to him. Uh, right, so Julian's in. Who's next? Who's next in defence, man? I'm going with Rio. Um, Rio. I think he. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a defender. As good as him, uh, in all my, in all my, still watching the game now. I don't think I've ever seen someone as confident as he is on the ball. And it was funny because we got Rio, we didn't get Man United Rio. We no. had Rio doing tricks at yeah. the back. He was, yeah. he used to lose the ball. I can remember he done a double drag back against Newcastle at home, and he put it for a diddy of man's legs, and. I just thought that is the best thing I think I've ever seen a centre half do. Um, yeah. I remember it as a kid, and I remember going home trying to do the same and things like that. But he obviously went to Leeds and he learned to defend more than Manchester United, and and what a career! But I'm taking him just for when he was Rio at West Ham. Yeah. Not Rio Man United or whatever. Yeah. Rio at West Ham, I think he's still up there with the best centre back we've ever had. Oh yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt, he was he was. Uh... Yeah, as you said, we we got him. We he, he was a different player then when he went to yeah. when he moved, and um, arguably, you know, if in a retrospective view of his career, he obviously had you know he had an amazing career. But you know, you look at it, if we had a, if we still had a little bit of that West Hamness in him, he would be in oh. the Braces and Maldini hundred yeah, percent tears. Wouldn't he? Terry's a fantastic defender as well, and it's yeah. always. 
suppose who was better, Rio or John Terry? And I, I don't know. I think, yeah, if he'd have done a bit more of that. I think if Rio had played in today's game, he'd have yeah. been at City. And yeah. he would have he would have been he would have bossed the game. Mm. Because he would have he was a better player than Virgil van Dijk, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but Van Dyke's sort of on this pedestal now where Rio could have sort of been there. But he maybe played in a little bit of the wrong era as well. He come mm -hmm. out of the, sort of the end of the tackling era. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and, and Sir Alex was was he wanted his defenders to defend primarily, wasn't it? So it wasn't about nowadays defenders are the same as midfielders you know they're interchangeable really yeah. um and i mean look at liverpool they've had you yeah, know, defenders sure. playing center back and because they've had to so and, and, Mascarano. yeah exactly so he would have fitted into arguably the modern day slightly better i think than, than maybe his era there because of his natural ball playing ability but anyway rio's in that's the main thing rio's in the the palmer 11 right okay we've got dicks we've got rio who's next I've, this was a really hard one because there's, there's been a couple, and I suppose you, it should be Alvin Martin, I suppose. Yeah. But I've gone with Ginge. Yeah. Just because I love him. Um, he doesn't. He was brilliant for us. And actually, Gabidon probably is there as well. Yeah. Winston Reed, they, they were fantastic players. Igor Stimach was a great player for us as he well. He was. Yeah, um, he was. Razor done well for us. Um, there was a, There's a few there, but I think. For me, Ginge, cult hero, mm. you can rely on him every week. He's going to. Yeah. And next to Rio, I think that's kind of the perfect partnership. Yeah, 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 definitely. You've got a bit of Garland, and a bit of. Mm, bit of yeah. Grit. Garland and Grit. That's and that's right. We missed him when he went to Villa. Um, yeah. Well, I think. I think he came back a better player. I think, I think actually did. the best thing he did for West Ham was leaving because he then was with Richard Dunn yeah. and and he's like that type of player and he came back. I, I don't remember much of Ginger's first stint, but his second stint, I remember him because maybe he was more of a, you know, chisel, grizzled man and, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he's a top boy, Ginger, top Ginge. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, grit. That's like that. Brilliant. Brilliant guy. Um, loves the club. Yeah epitomise everything about someone who comes to play for West Ham and took it all on board. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. That's what I like. Right. Okay. Dixie, Rio, uh, Ginge. I've Who's gone next? for a, me right back. I think we'll be saying Sufal in, in time. I, I agree. I agree. He yeah. will be, but I'm, he did, he hasn't, he's only had a season, not even full season. <laughs> so I can't put him in. So I've gone for Stevie Potts. Yes, girl Steve Potts. Which I don't know if he'd make a lot of people. It was when going for it, I was trying to think you had Shemmel and Impey, mm. even Antonio just played there and people <laughs> like that. But Stevie Potts played so many games for West Ham. Another one that probably doesn't get the the praise that he deserves. Same as Julian. Same as Julian. He yeah. doesn't he doesn't like doing he things, you know. He's a so. man a little bit, Steve yeah. Potts. He played so many games, was captain of West Ham for many years, was very small and played centre half. Yeah. Um, which said when you think it was about it was the days of the big centre forward, Alan Shearer's things like, like that, the Definitely. big the bigger forward man, Ferguson and all that. And he was playing against them and doing well. So I think uh Stevie Potts gets in my team. Yeah. And and, and obviously he's still, you know, he's he's in the under twenty the under twenty threes and things like that. And but he's the same, he's the same as June. Very, you know, doesn't like doing okay. him. We've, we've had lots of lots of his mates are trying to get him on the on the show and he doesn't want to do he doesn't like doing them. So it's like I think because it's like his job. Do you know what I mean? It's, he, yeah. he never did interviews really, like TV interviews either. We found one which we did. Um, which we put up when we did a like, little video, a little appreciation night for him. But even that was like 30 second video, you know, interview and stuff. But no, yeah. Again, one of those guys who's sort of that modern day legend really our sort of our, our legend. yeah i think yeah our, exactly newer age i remember steve potts no our age will they're they're yeah yuri and bishops and things like that that that's that yeah. was our age john monkers yeah. and that that's so they were our legends yeah Actually, that, I mean, that was when football was fun. I'll be honest. I think I find was. football boring now, so like from a, a personality perspective. Yeah. You know, it's like that's why someone like Deck stands out head and shoulders with all the younger 
players because he's just got personality when he interviews him and he talks so well and so openly and hasn't had anything media trained out of him in terms of how he interviews yeah. whereas everyone else is so boring i just find it really boring football for that scared of getting done over and it's, it's yeah really because even like the celebrations and things like mm. that had a celebration ian wright like what a great yeah. man that was yeah. for football um, even when he's at Arsenal, celebrated every goal like it, it was his last. Um, that's what you wanted in your team. Yeah. They've killed football now. Um, yeah, it is more boring. I've got a lot of friends that have actually stopped watching football as much, which is they just don't find it as exciting anymore. Which no nah, makes sense. I understand not. that. I understand yeah, totally. That was a... right. Okay, there's there we go. Right, who's the next player? Let's move on. Let's move on. Right. Who you got next in your team? Right wing. I'm yep. going Trevor Sinclair. Good old Trev. I think he was a brilliant player for us. Yeah. Um, the He could play in different positions. He played up front, right wing. We were sort of a five at the back at the time with Harry, weren't we? And he, he yeah. was, I thought he was a really, another kind of underrated. He scored goals, um, was good in a tackle, fast, got back in the England squad with us, didn't he? He did, uh, yeah. He played he right did. back at the at World Cup, didn't he? Uh, I think he played. Yeah, so he's, he, I think he started left wing, didn't he? And left, I think yeah, he played left everywhere. Back, wing or something, something like, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. Was he more? Was he predominantly right or left? I can't actually. Remember. I think he played. I mean, I, I, I mean, he's in, he's in my eleven at right wing, and I think that's what he yeah. tends to be known as best. But he was one of those guys who could play anywhere, really. Anywhere, and he and he would play a decent role wherever you put him. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Not yeah. just like he was a good player, a very good player. We got he him. Was. He was a cheap player for us as well, but he—I uh, remember he scored a couple of goals. I think against Tottenham, two-one. I think one was outside of his boot, top corner. He was he never scored a tap him. No, no, he was a, obviously <laughs> a bicycle kick. He's remembered for at QPR, but he was a very good player. It was sad to see him go. Actually, it was, yeah. But he's wherever he's gone, he's been adored. So you know, he's still really into West Ham and, and, and loves the club. And we've had him on a few times. He's done a few bits for me. He's, he's a top boy, and um, and yeah. But he's same as same as City. You know, QPR. Like everywhere he's gone, he's been loved. And so that's a, a mark of the player. Very similar to like Ian Bishop, for example. He was the same. Man yeah. City, live, yeah, us. He's still adored and and um, and sinks. And because we put sinks in, we get a retweet because he basically watches everything he's in. So that's great, brilliant. Oh. Well done, Sam. <laughs> there you go. Well, Social okay. engagement at its best. Right, who's next, man? Right, I'm going for Declan in the middle. Um, oh yeah. Which this is a tough one because obviously you've got Lampard, Carrick, Cole, um, all these Moncur, Hutchinson. Lomax, um, even Hayden Mullins, to be fair. Well, um, Hayden, Hayden Mullins is one of those players, right, that doesn't get a look in or any fans 11, but you no. interview any player. So we've had Bobby on recently and various, and anyone who played with him, he goes in their team because he's like there. He's, he's, he's a brilliant of, player for us, but I remember West Ham fans used to moan about him. Yeah. Oh, Mullins, Mullins, Mullins. Um, but uh, he was brilliant. He used to break it down. He'd give it away. He he was a really, really good player for us. Um, he was. Obviously, that we had the Mascarano as well, which was stupid, obviously. Um, but it he he didn't. He was a good player. Fletcher was a good player for us as well. Yeah. Um, the but I, I'm going for Declan. Um, definitely, I think he's. I hope this kid goes on. If it's with us or not, he gets my blessing. Wherever he goes, I, I love this kid. I just think he's – I just love watching – every when I watch West Ham, I watch him. Yeah. It's uh, it's funny. It's uh, And people have said to me, I've heard Tottenham fans, brother-in-law, like, oh, Harry Winks is better and this person's better and this person. They're not. They're not in the same league. And that's no. why he starts for England. Now, he will be England captain. Yes. Um, I did think he'd probably move back to centre-half or he'd go to Man United or somewhere and go to centre-half. Um but now I think he's actually he will stay in midfield. Um, yeah. But it, what a great player! Like he's just what he can do. He's long passing, short pass. But he's the way he breaks up play. Yeah. I don't think we've ever had a player in my no. life that I've seen that can do it no. with ease. No. Yeah, well, he's he's the only one who seems to tackle in the Premier League. No one else tackles. And brilliant, he, like, he it's tackles. A, yeah, it's oh, and obviously look, he's found his thing. Suchek, I think it's another great. He could be the man. We West Ham fans have really got on board with him, but mm. 
I, they found a perfect combination there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, a little bit of me wishes it, 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 they just made him the captain rather than the, the armband keep going backwards and forwards. Say to that, him, yeah. I hope next year they say, you know what? You're the captain now. Um, yeah. Mark's not in the team. I, I find it a bit silly where you're in and out of the captain and giving it over and think I find it all a bit silly. Mm. Just make him the captain. Make Mike the vice captain. Still the voice in the dressing room. Mm. Um, but I just I kind of like that. Just give it to him. Make him the man. Yeah, and I, I mean I I see both sides. I I, can, I, I can totally see you know is a bit is a bit sort of, particularly like during the game when he's trying to hang <laughs> chasing Mark trying to put a fucking it's why, why, why they can't head, get two. Why they can't yeah. get two captain's armbands and just swap, put one in his sock? I don't get it. I don't get why they have to have any one. You know, no. they're, they're, they're multi-million pound players yeah. and companies, and they can't afford more than one captain's armband. So and so, it's so it's a bit silly. Um, it, but to me, it shows it shows Declan's respect. Um, I as a, I think that's about a mark of him, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because it just for me, it's silly. And I bet if you said to Mark. Do you do you care about coming on for three minutes with Mark? Um, I think Mark would say no. care less. Um, yeah. He's that kind of guy. Um, yeah. I just think it's the, the the flames pass now to to Declan. Yes. Um, yeah. We all love Mark, and he should be celebrated for what he's done one hundred percent. And I hope he gets his proper send off next year because yeah. um, he's been fantastic for us. But yeah. Declan, I think if we're gonna try and keep this guy, we got to pull out all the stops. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's he'll be. That's what I mean. At least there's like a roadmap now for him. So you know he knows basically at the end of at the end of the um, you know end of next summer he's got the keys of the castle. Yeah, it's his. It's his. You know, part of me wishes we still had those big turrets. So yeah. you know he could like have a have a, a ceremonial key to those, that castle turrets. But he'll be king of the castle, and he'll be the poster boy, and he'll be. The man, he'll be the he'll be the modern day West Ham, and I'm mean, funny. The guy's played over a hundred times for us now already. Yeah. Only, was it twenty two? Christ, you know who knows how many games he could play if he stayed with us for a you know prolonged period of his career. Hoping from all of it, you know why not? You know, um, the club's got to show he, ambition to keep him. Yeah, 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 yeah. To, because he's that good. Um, yeah. and I think sadly, I don't know if it will. Um, if we, if the club, hopefully he sees, you know what, we're progressing. Yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. In Europe, you get it. If you don't, then you start looking, is he going to stay, things like that. You just hope he doesn't go to somewhere like a Tottenham or somewhere like that. He goes to a, a top club. Yeah. I mean, we were all, uh, most of us were, you know, a lot of people were resigned to him leaving last summer and were literally walking yeah. him out the door, wishing him all the best to Chelsea or whatever. Um, and... You know, he, I mean, it's, I don't even think the Premier League. I think he could walk into any any of the top sides in the world and and and, and improve yeah. their team. Um, he, he's such a unique role, the role he plays. There's not many at all that are better than him in the in the world. I'll tell you at the moment. Um, he many just gets it done with oh, it, yeah. Premiership. You, but you look in Spain, things like that. Is he technically good enough to play there? I think so. Um, yeah, I think so. He's coming back that he can play there. But I think I pray that we keep him. Yeah. Um, and build a team around him and say, you know what? We're going to make you the man. We're going to build the team around you. You will be our guy. Yeah, You, no, you are the next Bobby Moore. I'd let, and you know what? Do something like that. Bring the six out of retirement after a couple of years and give it to him and say, yeah. you are that guy. Because yeah. he could be, um, I, in, in my opinion, I think he, he could be a modern day Bobby Moore. I agree. I agree totally. I think he could, he, I think he could surpass, he could get bloody close to bloody... Oh, Billy Bonds, his, his appearance. Yeah. It's the amount of games that people that we play in the modern day, you know, and, and, and so who knows? But yeah, he's, um, you know, I mean, we've, we've been fortunate. Obviously, he's injured, he's injured at the moment. He's, he's, you know, he's not an injury prone person. No. Um, you know, the fact is, he, you know, I mean, that Poland game where he apparently got injured, he was playing, he carried on playing for the next half hour. Apparently, right. he got made, it was, and, and that was the well, game that everyone, depth, though, because we rely yeah. on it far too much. We do, we do. Like, now we do. Yeah. Um, because you you got to put Mark in there. Mark's legs are not there as much. Or, or no. you know what? It's not his legs are not there that much. We play a different way now. Yeah, it doesn't um, suit his game now. We got, we, we, we play on the counter and things like that. It doesn't – I don't see Mark in this number 10 role. I, I, I don't know why we keep going with it. Um, 
because he's never really played there in his life. Mark's no. is better when he's sitting there tackling. Um, yeah. Another good pass or the ball. Um, yeah, no, definitely. No, I totally agree, man. So, yeah. yeah. It's all... King Declan in the middle. He's King Declan. Captain. Who's next? Oh, Who's next? Know. Who the heck could you make Declan captain over Julian? I don't know. Oof. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they can have a fight for it. They can um, have a fight. My my second one is probably going to cause the uproar. Is is Frank? Um, yeah, it was. It was between him and Carrick. Carrick, I thought, was fantastic. But him and Deck are a very similar player. Um, yeah. Uh, but Lampard, I think people. He was probably one of our last. Well, Nolan, I suppose, but last goal scoring midfielders. Mm. Um, Suchek, I suppose, as well. But. He was. Uh, it was a shame that West Ham fans never actually gave him the chance, really. Um, mm. And I'm, I suppose I'm, I'm putting him in there for really a little bit of what he did after as well. But yep. even at West Ham, he was fantastic. Um, yeah. I don't think we actually appreciated what he had, what we had um, with I him. I think we did, and yeah, I think he did. Proved everyone wrong. And good luck to him um, because he took some dogs' abuse. He gave it back, um, but I'd like. I'd like Frank. I'd like it to calm down with him a little bit now, because mm. it's. I don't. I'm, I've. I've let go of that one. The yeah, Paul yeah. one went That's on. Too long. Say, we're back in C. Like, that yeah. one went on. No, we can stick with in C. No, but I still <laughs> like you in C at all. But it's like I think we should celebrate what a player we had with him um, a little bit. Yeah. A bit of stupidness, but then I think people forget his uncle, his dad, were all let go. There was that bit in this. People cheered when he broke his leg. He was a young kid. And mm. really, then pricks had done that false, this war that could never have happened. Yeah. I mean, he was, I mean, you, you know, by obviously interviewing lots of people who were around the time that he was there, you know, he was doing three, four hours extra training every day because he knew that he was Frank Lampard's son and he yeah. was Harry Redknapp's nephew. So, it was almost like he had to, and I think that, if anything, that that probably not necessarily to our benefit, but to Chelsea's benefit, because then he, you know, is that work he, ethic? Yeah, they, going. Loved, they loved yeah. him from, from the minute he walked in, and it he worked. Did. And and he's probably one of England's greatest ever midfielders. He's yep. Chelsea's greatest ever goal scorer, and he's a midfielder, mm. just insane. Um, Mental. so he's got goals for us as well. So I'm I'm having Frank in there. Yeah, he, he, a great he, shout. Um. And then on the other side, oh, uh, it's a toss-up. Probably, I think my greatest ever player is Pyatt. Yeah, um, I think he, Di Canio is the first one we all go to because we yeah. loved him. But I think technically, Pyatt is the best player I've ever I seen. With um, yeah. Tevez is there, but really, we only got Tevez for six games. Yeah, like we we remember Tevez as this. Yeah. He was there 10 seasons. It was really six games that he played. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit like Glenn Johnson as well. Um, yeah. He played a few games for us. Um, so it, it, was he one, it, would he be the right back 100%? But he was. He, well, he didn't play enough. But Payet, no. I was so, so sad when he went. I, I yeah. literally was one of the players that I just couldn't wait to turn. And I've got to say, Lingard has become a little bit of my Payet. Um, yeah, I get I that. I cannot wait to watch him. Um, yeah. And Ben Rama's got a little bit of him. Uh, and I've got hope for Ben Rama that he's going to mm. next season bed in a little bit and, and start doing some bits. Because I think a go or two and he oh, yeah. he's going to be a yeah. good player. But Pyatt was just special. He was, yeah. he was a special, special talent. It was so sad the way it all ended. Um, again, I think West Ham fans have kind of let go of it a little bit now yeah. and we miss him, and I, uh, it hurts me seeing him in the, when I see Marseille or whatever. I look at it, <laughs> oh, like, he's a, he should be a Marseille. But he, uh, that, I think for me, definitely, he's there. So that's yeah. uh, no, he he's, is. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. He's, he's the best technical player I think I've ever seen. Probably ever likely to see, unfortunately. I don't think there's many yeah. times we'll get a Ballon d'Or nominee no. playing for us while he's playing for the same club. Um, but yeah, that was... I missed as well with Scotty Parker, obviously. Yeah. Um, Another brilliant, brilliant player for us. Um, but I've got yeah, Lampard just beats him, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so put Lampard in, we'll put Pia in. Who's next? Who's next? Then we've got two more spots. You've got Paolo, you have to go for Paolo. Um, I was assuming that was happening. Yes, you have to do it. Um, 
I think just the, everything about him, he was West Ham. Everything yeah. about him, he was off his head. Um, obviously, the Bradford game. My favourite Paolo game, I think, was Arsenal. Uh, yeah. Where he flicked it over Adams and Keown. And I think he scored two that day. We won 2 1, I think. With, with his shorts on backwards as well. With his shorts. shorts on. Yeah. And do you know what? I used to wear my shorts backwards just because Paolo wore my shorts. <laughs> Still done it up until about, well, until I was playing. I used to always put them on backwards. It was crazy. I don't know why. That, that was the influence he had. Um, what was funny, I, years ago, I actually nicked Paolo's boots from the training ground. And uh, <laughs> my mate was playing there. And he went fucking ballistic. And then, like, a big inquiry was made into who nicked the boots and in the end i had to slip them back <laughs> but i i probably caused harry a right load of pain but i'd nick these boots that have been broken in and, and i had them on my side and then mate come around and sam we gotta give these boots back this geezer's tearing the training ground to pieces finding out who he is. Oh, oh give them back give them back <laughs> so i had his oh, brilliant. if you listen it was me the <laughs> But he gone back so as a main thing. He gone back in the end. More good. Fate, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, no. But I mean, yeah, we're, we're, as you said, we talk about you know modern day footballers and Pia epitomised sort of modern day technical ability, whereas Di Canio epitomised that sort of fun era we were saying before, where he had the technical ability, maybe oh, not as much as Pia in all in all honesty, yeah. but he had that showmanship around himself, oh. which just made him in my estimation. It's funny because I was actually, I loved him for Celtic. Um, yeah. There was a time when I think Gaza was at Rangers, so you used to see mm. Scott Cooper a bit more. And yeah. I just remember watching this guy and in the luminous yellow and black stripe. And I had a Celtic shirt with the Canio, I think it was seven on the back. And I can remember, and I remember the day when he signed for West Ham, I went over to park my mates and they were all like, he's come to you, he's come to you. And I, and I couldn't believe it. And he was like my hero then. So Brilliant. when he went, come finally come to West Ham, it was like, fuck it all, like, you've got yeah. him. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I think you forget a little bit of how great it was with him. He's become sort of this folklore that, who's your favourite player? Worst part of the canyon. Like, it's, like yeah. it's that. But people kind of forget the games and that he never traveled away and <laughs> what yeah, a yeah, yeah. craziness yeah. with him really. That <laughs> brilliant. The, I went to his debut against Wimbledon and they sang the, I can heal like for literally 30 minutes. It was, uh, yeah. it was brilliant. Um, in the old white kit, it was, uh, yeah, it was, he was just that man that made us all happy. Yeah, he, he did. He just made you smile. He made you smile. Even, he even us. He did there with that defender. Like he, he put yeah. him on his, so that was it. You lost three nil, but it was Paolo. That's done the that. thing, and the thing is, we, we're talking about him, and we both we both got his big Cheshire cats grins on because that's what he brought to us. He, he was his smile, and he made us enjoy our time. But I mean, that whole period was just crazy. You talk about a Bradford City game; something like that happened every game, but it was just that yeah. that game epitomised just the whole thing, the whole just every and every facet of Di Canio, whether it was him being mesmeric or him being this petulant kid and wanting to get subbed off. And that's why I loved him because he was just didn't know what power was going to turn up. When everyone goes on about that Everton uh, yeah. on the award, because if you rewind that and look at it, he was never going to score that goal. No. He caught it so high, he would never have even headed it. <laughs> and you look at it and you go, oh, he's going to score on it. No, no, Paolo, you weren't. You caught he got it. an award you for it. So if he was going to score, he probably would have. The, uh, <laughs> uh, good it was, uh, the, uh, who's my final? I'm going. Who's your final one? It was a tough one because obviously it was Tevez, there was Defoe, Kitson, Bobby, Colton. But I've gone for John Artson. Um, birthday boy. It's his birthday today. Is it? Happy wish birthday. Him happy bur yeah, 43 today. He was the only player that when he left West Ham, I cried. I can still remember re watching it on the news in the morning before I yeah. went to sleep. Um, he saved West Ham. Him and Kitson, mm, yeah. we were down. Um, yeah. That game against Tottenham, the first game they scored. But it, I think it was a season after. He practically scored. I think he scored 26 goals or something like that. Something he, like, yeah. He's our last ever real goal scorer. Yeah, he is. Oh, <laughs> like when you think back, it's we crazy, were talking it? the other day, but he was a brilliant player. He just had everything. He was like, he was a, mo he was our Alan Shearer. Yeah, <laughs> he wasn't as good, but he was, he was Alan Shearer for us. And he's got. I mean, obviously, we we did a little uh, appreciation night for him as well. And looking at his goals, 
it, you know, I my assumption was he always scored like headed goals. Yeah. But it was only with that Tottenham game where he where he scored his debut, where he put Sol Campbell in the net with him and yeah. the goal. Um that was really he- I said, but then most of them were like really it was just powerful shots and dinky finishes and stuff. He was a, a strong, strong player for us and a, a top boy. Top boy. I, I love John. Yeah, he uh, yeah. he goes in for me and I like, I say I loved Kitson as well, and I think he was yeah. a bit with injury, but them two together were a perfect partnership for West. They were, they just worked, uh, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And we've, and I loved Zamora, um, Dean Ashton. I like yeah. Colton, obviously, because he's a cult hero. Um, done some brilliant things for West Ham and should never be forgotten. Um, but they, they, that, that Hartson, I just think he, he was more that complete player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe coming yeah. from Arsenal with that sort of that pedigree, player, like the yeah. or. Like the early Wenger, um, maybe that helped it. But he he was he was a good player. And yeah, no, he was. Lose him to Wimbledon. Yeah. When you think now, like we lost him to Wimbledon for seven, I think seven point five million, something like that. Yeah. But every time uh, when we had, when we had him on the channel, we spoken about that, and every, every it was uh, sort of saying to him, "Oh, obviously you are." I think he was our record signing when we'd signed him. And he went, "Russ, it's he says I've not been big headed, but everywhere I went, I had a tag." When yeah. I went to Arsenal, I was the world's most expensive teenager. When I went to you, I was the most expensive player you bought. Went to Wimbledon, I was the most expensive player there. Celtic, you know, he's like, I. it was just part of I just get, yeah, to get used to it. He done very well at Celtic, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's brilliant. And Sutton, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. And last yeah. Sutton. Yeah, last. they had a really good side, that is. I mean, I mean, there's a team. That's a strong team, my friend. That's a strong team. That's a, that's a Champions League team there. That is. We won't have top four now. No worries with that, that team. When you look at that, he's, and there's so many players that could have got in there. Oh, of course there is. You could have done 10 teams, man. That's the whole fun of it. That's the whole fun of it. Sam, man, you've hopefully you've had your breakfast because you've been up since four anyway. But anyway, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. My lasagna is going to be on soon, so that's almost good. Fantastic. Um, cheers, buddy. Really, really appreciate your time. Really, Come on, really you fun. Come on, you guys. Obviously, thanks everyone for watching as well. If you, if you, whatever you're doing, podcasts or whatever, um, make sure you check it out YouTube, or whatever. Check out and give us a share, like, give us a share, give us a subscribe. And from myself and from Sam, take care, everyone. Stay safe, wash those hands, get those jabs. Come on, you irons. Come on, you irons. Come on, you irons, and see you again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye, see bye. you later. Bye-bye. Bye bye.